Hello everyone and welcome back to Crayon Code. Today we're going to build a nice little animated menu toggle. So let's get straight to work and write some markup, which is simply a link tag that has the class menu toggle and an href set to the hash so it doesn't point anywhere because later on we want to use a click handler to toggle between the open and close state. Inside the link tag we just put three spans that have the class bar because those are the elements which will later form either the burger or the close X. So yeah, let's put them right there. So inside the CSS let's simply start with an HTML selector where we set the font size because this is a base measurement for all usages of the RAM unit which will be used in quite a few spots. And inside the body tag let's simply put a background, a dark gray background, set it its min height to 100VH so it will always fit the viewport. And let's also set display to grid and place content to center because I want to center the menu toggle vertically as well as horizontally so and that's the easiest way to do it. And of course let's also add a basic reset so the asterisk will match every element which is present inside the HTML document and there we are going to set the padding to zero, margin to zero and for each element the box sizing to border box. For the actual menu toggle let's define a few variables. First one is the size variable which simply defines how large the entire menu toggle is. We will be using this for the width and the height and we will be defining a padding which is set here to 1.5 rams and the total size now is calculated by using the size plus two times the padding because the padding is present on the left and right respectively on the top and bottom edge. So that's why we take it two times. For each bar the height is defined as 1 RAM and we also need to define for each bar the vertical position to which it will be transformed. So the first one is the easiest one, it's top, this is simply set to padding. And for the center we have to calculate a little bit, so it's 0.5 times the size, so this is the, the center of the size area. And since the bar also has a height we need to subtract half of the bar height to actually get the middle position for the center bar. And for the bottom it's uh, again a little bit easier. We take the size minus the padding and minus the bar height. So that's how we get the position for the bottom bar. But now let's define a few things on the menu toggle itself. First we set display to inline block such that we are able to explicitly set width and the height which is going to be total size. So we're taking padding and the actual size into account. And yeah, let's set the background color to a variable BG color open which I haven't defined yet, will come soon. And yeah, to make it stand out a little bit more, we just give it a box shadow, but this is purely optional. Now let's take care of the missing color variables. One is for the bar color open, which is a slightly faded black. It's faded down to 90% and a bar color for a closed state, which is a darker gray. So the bars will change color by when, when switching between states. And of course there's the missing BG color open, which is a pink color and the BG color close, which is a yellow. And the color variables we'll be using later, but for now let's take care of the styling of each of the bars. Each bar will be positioned absolutely and to make this work properly we'll also need to set position relative on the menu toggle, on the, on the containing element. And each bar was having assigned the same position initially, which is the top left corner of the menu toggle but taking the padding into account. And in its width each bar takes this available size and in the height we are we already have defined the bar height in a variable so we're going to use it here and yeah of course let's also start with a background color which is given through the variable bar color open which we just defined. Now let's give each bar its initial position so the first one which will identify through the nth, nth child selector is going to be put in its position through a vertical translation using the top variable. Same goes for the second bar just that we're using here the center variable and for the third bar we are using the bottom variable. So each bar is getting its initial position through the variables top, center and bottom. So this is how the menu toggle looks while it's in open state. So now let's take care of the closed state and simply let's change the background color which we have defined in the BG color close variable but to make this directly work let's write a little bit of javascript code which will be simply selecting the actual menu toggle through document query selector and on that one we're going to hook in a click event and each time this click event is clicked we're using the current target property of the event because it could also be that the user clicks a bar and since we have hooked in the event handler on the actual toggle link we want to change classes directly on that one so that's why we need the current target because this one is yielding the element we initially have hooked in the event handler so that's why it's useful here and we're simply going to toggle the close class through the class list so this is actually quite simple here. 
Now let's give it a try. Yeah, works very well. Yeah, but let's also make it smoothly transitionable, which is where we're adding the transition property on the menu toggle itself, making the background color transitionable. And since we will be having multiple properties, which will be transitionable the very same way, let's put the, trend, the actual transition configuration into a variable, which is simply a 500 millisecond duration and an ease in, ease out easing function. Yeah, much better this way. Yeah, since we already have it for the background color of the menu toggle, now let's also take care of that the bars change the color while uh, flipping states. So let's target all bars and change the background color to the variable bar color closed. And to make this also smoothly transitionable, we are going to add the transition property for the background color on the bar selector itself with the same transition configuration, which we just put in a variable. So here it's already coming in handy that we have this. Okay, now all that's missing is the transformation for each of the bars in closed state, which we're going to define in a very same way. We define the initial positions. So let's first select the first and apply a transformation, which on one hand shifts the top bar to the center and rotates it by 135 degrees so that it's forming one leg of the X. And yeah, this is also not smoothly transitionable yet. So let's take this care of and add the transform property to the list of transitionable properties with the same transition configuration. So again, the variable is coming in quite handy. So much better. We can see that the top bar is the leg of the X, which is running from top right to bottom left. To make the effect a little bit nicer, let's introduce a rotation around the Y axis. So this is getting a little bit of a 3D effect. And since we're just turning it by 180 degrees, we actually don't change the appearance, but it makes a great contribution to the actual effect. Now let's directly jump to the third bar, which will be the other leg of the X. And this transformation is actually quite similar. It is also a vertical translation to the center, but this time the rotation will be set to minus 135 degrees and we'll have also the very same Y rotation, creating a really nice effect. So now all that's left is the center bar because this one is actually nothing we will be needing anymore. And that's where we're going to set a scale transformation because we want to make this invisible by scaling it in the X axis to down to zero while it maintains its vertical translation. So yeah, we first set the scale transformation to zero and then put the translation on the Y translation, which is still the very same way. And you can see that we're missing initial value for the X translation. And I want to fade the middle bar to the very left. So that's why we also change the transformation origin because I want to have it collapsing from right to left. And to make this possible, the transformation origin on the x-axis need to be on the left margin, which is the, the 0%. And we put a s initial scale value of one for the scale x in the initial position. And yeah, this is the exact effect I want to have. So it looks really great. Yeah, and that's already it. I hope you enjoyed creating this nice little animated menu toggle with me. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.